So here's iPhoto, it's real, not just a slide. And there's events, something we've had in this last year. It's really great. You can skim over all the events and find all your favorite photos. But now, we have this new feature, Faces. So you saw the snapshots, but the thing the slide didn't show you is how interactive and cool it is. So if I pass my mouse over any one snapshot, I see all the faces within that snapshot. And you see how iPhoto with face detection zooms right in on the face. If I hold down the Option key, I see the entire photo. I can look at the whole photo adjust the faces of the person in the photo. So it's really easy to, to manage all your friends and faces, but how do you create them? So let's go back to events. I'm going to pick event, this event called City of Light. I'm going to go into it. Let me pick a photo. I'll pick well, this first one at the top. And let's say that's a person I haven't been tracking yet with faces. So I'm going to go into their photo. And I'm going to click this new button, Name. When I do, immediately face detection finds the face in that photo, and it doesn't know who this is, so it says unknown name. So I'm going to type that person's name. That's Allie. And that's it. I've named Allie, and now Allie will be in my faces section. I can manage it. Before I go back there, I'm going to hit the right arrow, go to the next photo in this event, and you see what iPhoto's done? On this photo, it says, first, on the right, it's asking me, is this Allie? So face recognition at work, it already recognized that might be Allie, and it just wants me to confirm it with a check to be certain, yes, that definitely is Allie. And the person on the left doesn't know who that is. Well, that's Allie's mother, so I'm going to name her Claire. And that's it. Now let me go to faces, and you see Allie and Claire have been added with snapshots because they're people I'm tracking in faces. Let's go inside Allie's face here, and now you see I've selected two photos I confirmed were Allie, so they're above the line. Those are for certain alley. Down below, instantly, this is thousands of photos in this library, it's found all these other photos that it believes is alley. I could just use these now, create slideshows or books, but I want to help iPhoto out a little more, give it more information. So I'm going to click this button down below that says confirm name. And what you see, it zoomed right in with face detection on Allie's face in all these photos. Yeah. If I want to confirm that these are definitely Allie and help iPhoto, I just click on them once, and those are definitely Allie. I can even do it faster. I'm just going to drag over all these photos, and automatically they've all been confirmed, and click Done. And now I've added more photos up above that are automatically recognized as Allie, and with that little bit of help, iPhoto can do an even better job finding more photos that are absolutely Allie, and that's all I have to do. So I've made it really easy for iPhoto. Let me go back to faces. One other cool thing you can do is I skim across all these photos of Allie. I can just pick one and say, well, that's the one I want to be on the snapshot. So I hit the space bar, and that now gets saved as the default view of Allie in all the photos. One more really fun thing. Imagine that's your family on the bottom, a mother and father and two kids, and you want to keep track of all their photos at once. I'm just going to drag across all four. And then I'm going to drag them onto the left-hand sidebar here and let go. And it's automatically made a smart album with all four people in it. I can name that. So name that our family. And now, whenever I go into that smart album, every photo that I've confirmed as one of those four people is always in that album, and I don't have to go hunting for them. So that's Faces. Faces is really powerful. Now let me show you Places. Places is just as cool. So I'm going to click on Places, and there, over the internet, we've got our map, and iPhoto has placed pins on the map of the places we've taken photos. The more you zoom in, the more detail you'll get. So here's the United States, and I can, for example, hover over this pin. Some photos were taken in Aspen. So I, whenever I see a pin and a name, I can just click the right arrow and go right to all those photos. So those are the photos that were taken at Aspen, even if they're across multiple events. So it's really easy to find your photos and look at them. Let's go back to events. Well, as I said, you might have photos that you took a while ago that weren't aside GPS tags. For example, this pumpkin patch event was taken in 2007 and didn't have a GPS camera being used. So I'm going to click the information button, flip it open, and it says, enter event location. So I'm going to start typing this really cool city out here on the coast, Half Moon Bay. See, I don't have to type very far. It recognizes the name from its list of places. I hit return. It's put a pin on the map on Highway 92 on the way to Half Moon Bay. And it's all assigned. Every photo in that event is now assigned to that location in Half Moon Bay. And I'm done. It's really that easy to add locations to all my events. 
And we go to a second event. This one was taken with a camera with a GPS chip inside it, the City of Light event. Let me flip it open. This is really cool. There are the pins of the location of every photo taken in this event automatically on that map. Isn't that nice? If I skim over the photos, the pins highlight blue on whichever one I'm looking at. Very cool. And in the bottom of the map, there's a little arrow. It says show in places. I can go right from this window to places. So I'm going to do that. Let me click show in places. It takes me right to places zoomed in on the map, right around all those photos where they were taken in Paris. So that's really cool. And I can zoom in, double click on a map. As I said, we also have a satellite view. Let's bring up the satellite view, going even further. You can see the Eiffel Tower right there. I see a pin on it. Someone also pointed out, wait a minute, there's a pin on the water. Well, of course, they took a boat ride along the Seine and took a picture of it. But let me click on this pin right here of the Eiffel Tower, and sure enough, there are the photos that were taken at the Eiffel Tower, right there in places. Well, let's go back to the map. I also know some, some photos were taken of the, around the Arc de Triomphe, but I don't remember, remember exactly where that was on the map. Well, I could scroll around until I find it, but there's another view in places I haven't shown you yet. This is the map view. On the bottom, I also have a column view. The column view across the top lists all the places that I've taken photos in the world. It's got countries, cities, states, lo famous events, uh, famous locations, and I can click on any one of them to get those photos. I can click on the United States. There's all my photos taken in the United States. I can click on California, all the photos taken in California. I'm going to see over on the far right, well, there it is, Arc de Triomphe. I select it, and there are the photos taken at the Arc de Triomphe. I don't have to find it on the map. When I click back on the map, there they are. There are the photos around the Arc de Triomphe. So that is an example of using the brand new Places feature along with Faces in iPhoto 09.